morning. It is good morning. I love it. Nice and cool. Birds are singing. Horses are fed. Been out here quite a little while getting this cylinder done. Uh, been a lot of you had an interest in porting and you're doing your own. And uh, I've got several porting videos up and stuff. And uh, had people ask, okay, well, what, show us pictures of your porting tools. Okay. My hands hurt. My fingertips are numb. I have little pencil grinders I use for inside my pores. When I build them that way, you don't generally have to for a normal log and saw. I don't have to go in there and open up them ports, you know, right down inside there, you know. That turn it so you can see it. Yeah, see them two little holes right in there. I don't generally have to. When I check my timing, I check to see where it's at. And it's generally uh, ample for what I'm doing. Uh, I do a, a velocity port more than anything on these 372s. 390 is same, same exactly. Uh, you're going to help me port today, actually. I take this off right here. See that? To just above this right here part, okay? Right where that flange is. I take that off. Here's one that's already took off. See? That's that's how much goes. That gets air up through from that crankshaft side. Well, what you're going to do, you're going to ride along. I'm not going to finish it. I've got one side done. Uh, the rough part. Okay, I want to stress that. This is rough. This is not finished. But I want to show you a couple tricks on keeping yourself steady. And uh, little things that will help you do important work. For those that you have a mind to. Here my Dremel. That's what I use. Nice and big. Nice and fat. That's what works for me. You want to go buy port tools? Go buy them. These work just fine. Uh, this particular one has an adjustment right here. Uh, I run 15,000 for most things. You'll see it right there. It's set at 15,000. On and off switch. It's pretty easy. Get yourself stable. A lot of times I'll just take a pair of pliers, uh, lay them down. I'll get you where you can see that for a minute. And I'll set that cylinder right on them pliers like that. And then I can rock that around, see? I don't need fancy jigs or anything. This is the way I've always done it. I've tried them movable vices. You guys are going to mention it. It's, there's just too much old school to me. So, what we're doing... Here's one side roughed in nice. See ya? You can tell which one's which, can't ya? I know you can. Okay. See the taper on the top? There's no, nothing on that side. Uh, I'll show you where to start on that. Get your tool where you can hold it good. Get your pliers, if that's what you use. Use your thumb. Anchor this with your thumb right here. Okay? Just like that. Okay, I'm anchoring this all the time with my thumb. That one right there. And I'll get that where that lays down. And I'll start light cut. Don't force the tool to cut. Let it cut. See, I'm just letting it cut. Okay, I have the shape that I want. Let me get you into some light here. See that? This is the one I'm doing right now. I got the shape like I want. 
okay? There isn't room for that tool down in there yet, but there's going to be. The next thing I actually do is you see where your this is your secondary, this is your primary transfer. What I do is I just, after I've cut this piece off, I come right down in here and I just kind of cut that off. Make that a flat on top, just like that. See how I did that flat? Okay, you'll see why in a minute I do that. Uh, don't let your tool chatter anymore. It's going to just learn how much feed you got to have and what your RPMs. Using different diameter tools changes your RPM. A smaller tool, uh, a lot of times will run just a little slower, bigger, or I mean a little faster than a bigger tool. A bigger tool, it's about... The surface feet, you know, sur surface inches. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to go right down inside that now. Okay, this is going to be hard for me to get this where you can see it, but I'll try. First stop. If I get this where you can see this, you'll see what, what happens and why I use these blunt tools. Can you see down in there? Hopefully you can. And on this side right here, I'm going to get it where you can see in there. You might see just a bit of a step in there. If you can't believe me, there's a step. Okay? I'm working off of that step every time. I'm just going down about half of what the tool, three quarters of what the tool can cut. Get it? Support it with your thumb. Thumb on the cylinder. You'll know, you'll develop a feel quite rapidly to when you're cutting. Okay, and here's where I use just a bench. I can look in there and see. Take your time and let the tool cut instead of forcing it. You'll feel every little ridge, every little bump, okay? Uh, now, the next thing is with this tool, we are going to tackle. We don't do anything in here much, just kiss that, kiss that surface right there. But what you're doing is you're trying to get that air to go in and around. So you got a little hump in there that I generally take out and it isn't very much in this particular cylinder so I flip this over I'm working on the same one I gotta turn my player so I can support it
Okay. So now what we've done, now you keep in mind you're trying to get both sides exactly the same, okay, as much as possible. Okay, you see we got a, it's like a little, like a, about a 40 degree or so, 45 degree right here on this end. Now we've already clipped this off so it's level, okay. That lets me be able to see that clearly uh, where I'm at. So what we're going to do is we're going to change tooling and we're going to get the uh, uh, build that, blend that in, and then we're also going to go around the bottom of the transfer where it rotates down into the cylinder. Okay, they make all of us special tools and right here is my special tool. That's what I use. I'm going to switch to this style bit. That'll help me out. It's a little smaller. You barely put them in if you're using a Dremel. Don't think there's something wrong with a Dremel. Yeah, it's nice to have fancy tools, but when you got old hands and arthritis like me, you want something with some meat on it so you know what you can grab a hold of it. Okay, you're gonna sit right here and watch me do this one so you can get the idea. Okay, we're trying to get the air to hit the top of the intake. So when it comes through them transfers, well, right here's your intake. We're trying to get that air right in there, okay? So we want to take, I'll do it upside down so you can see. We want to take this spot there and then this spot here. We're going to make that angle just a lot slightly different, okay? Always cut in the direction of your uh, rotation of your tool. See, the tool spins this way. So that means as the tool's cutting, it digs in and pulls the chip out. You start going the opposite way and it just goes, it jumps all over. You'll never get anywhere. Okay. So. Blend that right around. Don't try to make sharp corners. Sharp corners don't flow air. Okay? You're encouraging this. Okay, now we're going to get the other side. Little cut. You got all day. It's easier to take a little and little than it is to take a lot and can't put it back. out. I'm going to let you see where we're at. hate doing this on this bench, but I got so many tools out here and trash that don't belong on the bench in the first place. What's the difference? Uh, Got to clean it before I can put a saw together anyway. So, here we go. Alright. Right here. See how where that angle is? both sides the bottom one i gotta do just a little tiny bit of work that is going to put that air to the top of the intake that little bit of change right there starts that air movement okay that will start that to twist and roll in there and uh, that's really what you want now when you're doing this this edge right here do not knife edge that. Keep that, see it's uh, 
there's just a little break there. That's what you want. This one's a little wide because I still got a little work there to do. But don't make that a knife edge. You, uh, that'll little pieces of that that you don't see will break off, get down the bottom of your cylinder, go run up through your transfers and and hurt you. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you something. I'm not ready to deburr yet, but you need to see what I do. Uh, if you're not comfortable with this, don't do this way. I'd rather you took a longer time and do it right than a short time and it was wrong. Okay, this is a little diamond. Okay, if you can't find one of these diamonds, just, you can use a small ball mill, okay? And what I do is just break that edge. Where I've already cut. See, I've cut right here. Alright? So, what I'm going to do is get this thing in the air just a bit so you can see. Alright? Now, inside that cylinder, in the direction of the tool, hit. I'm just kissing that. See that? sure when you feel that there ain't nothing left I mean nothing you can use some 180 220 320 this is 320 right here it takes a little longer uh, you're breaking that edge just just saying that you can do it you're not gonna remove any real nickel cell you're really not you're not gonna hurt much uh, you catch them little corners you, I mean, you make darn sure there's nothing. Like I said, this is a little premature because I'm really not at that stage yet. But I just wanted to just, you to see. Okay, blow it out. Thank finger saw ran for my air compressor. Okay. Now, you can probably see, barely... Where that the shiny spots are, you can see where I cuffed that. And I broke the edge on that nickel cell and one thing or the other. And you can see any place that isn't right. But I'm going to tell you what. Tactile sensation dictates I can feel better than I can see at my age. I run my finger. I run up and down. And I roll, and I mean this, I am really religious with this part. Once in a while, you'll get sloppy when you first start and say, oh, that's good enough. Guess what? It ain't. You end up with a freaking trash piston in a hurry. And sometimes it does more damage. Okay, see, that was really quite nice right there. Okay. Well, I might as well change this tool. See, with these special uh, uh, wrenches and stuff that you... You, you just push your little button, pop that out, go back to this burr, give it a little tighten, turn it on, get my favorite pliers out, lay them down. I'm going to finish this off right here. Okay, I've got that well within range to 
be able to finish with a stone. Found a little spot. Keep your tool in handy. But don't don't let it get all over your bench like it is mine. Don't don't look at my bench. It's a bad example. Okay. I got a little spot right up in here in this corner. I want to adjust that. Same thing right here. Okay, I'm quite happy with that right there. It, uh, I wonder how many people actually show port work on YouTube. I'll tell you right now, it generally ain't a good idea. It really ain't. But I do it anyway. I don't care. You might as well see what you get. But you, more importantly, is know how it runs. Okay, I'll give you a little. This one is a fairly aggressive. You see the inside that? that uh, the roof has been raised. That's upside down, by the way. I do not widen them. Only just a little bit. Now, if you got where you can see that, good, you'll see, boy, that really picks up light. The top of that is slightly oval, meaning it isn't straight line. I do not leave my port straight across ever. Same thing down inside. I can get that where you can see that. Trying to get you your best vision you got here. See them? When you look down them, you'll see in that roof about two or three little lines. I leave them deliberately. I cut them in. That promotes that air when it comes in to go straight down underneath that crank. You want to rotate around that crank backwards from the crank rotation is what it does. It goes straight up your freaking transfers then. Otherwise, it just mixes around the crank the wrong way. Okay, that helps that. Okay, here's your exhaust side. See your exhaust rope's got a slight, just slight round to it, okay? Don't square your corners. Get your corners, just round your corners in there. It uh, Just round them. You know, don't, don't, round flows more air and square, okay? Now, what we're going to do is just take just a minute. It, uh, we're getting a little long here, but I'm going to take a little minute and show you the value of stone, okay? Let's get on to this side. I'm going to do just a bit of this, but you'll get the idea there's just as much stone work as there is anything else. Pour it with your thumb onto your cylinder. You can feel that stone glide over high spots. That's the type of finish you want to leave right there. You don't you don't want it any smoother than that. You want to keep that air and uh, away from that cylinder slightly. It keeps the fuel in suspension. Okay, you polish this stuff. I will promise you, you're going to have uh, gas running out your muffler. Uh, that's what happens. Uh, we're going to work out a little bit on that exhaust with this stone.
cot, you take a cot, go in, take a cot. Don't ever get in a hurry doing that. change on that last cut that lets me know that it came to the edge of the cylinder where it's actually cutting on a nickel cell okay there's still work there to be done we'll get a little bit more tool too fast it'll have a tendency to want to uh, stick your uh, uh, the aluminum will stick to it okay and uh, I don't get real concerned because I like it partially loaded up when I'm wanting to polish uh, the exhaust side we'll, we'll, we'll polish a little more than that I don't get it stupid smooth but I get it where it doesn't feel really rough intake side I leave fairly rough. I'll have a coarse stone when I go in there, and I'll rough that up uh, so that the air uh, isn't in direct contact with the cylinder. Okay, if you can see in there, I don't know if you can see this kind of D-shaped. That's what I like. Kind of flatter where it enters, more oval, and then turn it upside down. You got them um, like three little grooves I leave to make that air go like that okay this is really it uh from here on out this cylinder is potentially done it's just a lot of stone work a lot of sanding a lot of you know just i'm going to spend about three more hours finishing this but i don't want to bore you guys to death but i do want to thank you for being here it's always a pleasure having you guys watch every time i like it Okay, so, you guys, Zerba, you doing your 390, you seen that, didn't you, buddy? Mm -hmm. Is that how I, I say that right? I think so. I really do. It, okay, that's enough. It's long enough. I'll talk to you tomorrow.